Doctors and scientists use AI in medicine and healthcare to do, well, amazing stuff. Why China will always be a runner-up in the AI arms race and how AI will be the next industrial revolution. You are watching the AI report, let's get into it. Alright, yesterday was a crazy day full of all kinds of AI news. I expected today to be more chill, but today is even crazier somehow. I tried to trim the fat today, but there's just no way around it. I think all of these things are important if you want to have a complete and fresh perspective on AI developments. Eesh, look at all of these tabs. We better get into it. Okay, a Wedbush analyst Dan Ives does not believe AI is a hype cycle, but a fourth industrial revolution playing out. Quote, I think we're just starting what we believe is the start of a new tech bull market, despite many of the bears continuing to be really skeptical. He expects a trillion dollars of spending in AI over the next decade. Have you noticed, by the way, that billions are no longer cool? We're already talking trillions here, which was an unbelievable amount of money like 10 years ago. Anyway, yeah, I'm generally very bullish on the AI market as well, as you might have guessed. In this article, Ives talks about NVIDIA mostly and how it's expected to grow, but I'm personally more interested in what AI will do for solopreneurs, for creators, and for small businesses. I think this is where we will actually see a lot of growth. I usually don't like Forbes articles, but I think this was a great headline. If you don't embrace generative AI now, you will hate yourself later. I already hate myself for not starting this channel six months ago. True story. But you know who probably doesn't hate themselves? The founders of Mosaic ML, No Traffic, and Calypso AI. Three of the hottest AI startups currently that have raised $2 billion. To be fair, the title is wrong for some reason. The investment amounts total around $1.4 billion. But still, like, these investors are making it rain on the AI startups. I have a bunch of ideas too. Maybe not a billion dollar ideas. But I'm going for the big T anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Hey, by the way, if you have an AI startup idea or even an AI startup you're working on currently, share it in the comments, please. In March this year, Goldman Sachs did an analysis of 900 job positions. They looked at details on the types of tasks done in each of them. Basically, they looked at every job and tried to estimate which parts can be automated and then grouped the jobs by sectors, and now we have this nice little infographic here. Beautiful colors informing you on the likelihood of you losing your job. So, around 46% of office and admin support are expected to be automated. Things like scheduling meetings, writing reports, data entry, etc. Legal is next with 44%. And then, interestingly, agriculture and engineering with 37%. Okay, there is a bit of misrepresentation going on here, I believe. So, I'm an engineer, I was actually a programmer for like a decade, and I still maintain some of my apps and other software, and I use ChatGPT and Copilot and similar tools. Guys, AI can't replace anyone, not yet at least. It can help you, it can make you more efficient and save you time, but the job can't be automated. I don't want to give a timeline, but I think we have at least a few years where AI isn't really capable of automating an entire job completely. Oh, and the bottom of the chart, we see construction, extraction, installation, maintenance, repair, building, and similar professions. I actually disagree with this kind of strongly. It is a very short-sighted view on things. Or rather, maybe the analysis works with what we know so far. But what we will see being developed like crazy really soon are robotic arms and even full-on robots and that's coming like in the next few years probably. AI and robots go together, who would have guessed that? For now, labor jobs are safe, but I've seen what those robotic arms and Boston Dynamics robots can do and I think in the next three years manual labor jobs will be under fire as well. Speaking of jobs, a college student has landed his or her dream job as a wildlife biologist with the help of ChatGPT. Hmm, wildlife biologist, that sounds like a pretty good job actually. Being out there, observing animals, trying to not get eaten by a bear, you know, a lifetime of adventure. This person has sent hundreds of handwritten applications and got nowhere, and then instructed ChatGPT to help with writing relevant and personalized applications and what do you know, it worked. Okay, here's the thing, this is cool for now, but it will only be an advantage for so long. After a while, everyone will start using ChatGPT for writing resumes. And I'll do a video on how to do that soon, actually. But then, employers will start catching on. 
or maybe resumes will look all flawless, which means they will all look the same, which means they will essentially be useless as a tool to evaluate potential employees. I guess take advantage of this while it's hot if you want, but the end result is not a magical utopia where everyone gets hired instantly. It's just a different recruitment process, probably with more live tests and evaluations. And that's okay. The good people at GitHub believe that AI developer tools will add $1.5 trillion to the world economy. There's the trillion again. Guys, quick side note. Can we really be in a bubble if people are talking trillions? Trillions? Like, seriously, I keep reading about trillions every day now. I know inflation is rampant and all of that, but come on. Even at 6% a year, which has only been a recent trend, that's like doubling the money supply every 10 years. But that's just doubling, not thousand mixing it. I'm telling you, we went from billions to trillions in less than a decade. You could never hear the word trillion a decade ago, unless you asked a fat three-year-old how many Skittles they wanted for their birthday. It wasn't even a real number. And now every third AI article is talking trillions. And this isn't just about anyone. This is from GitHub. Those are smart people over there. There's something going on here. This can't be a bubble. Anyway, GitHub Copilot is used by more than 1 million people right now, including yours truly, in more than 20,000 organizations, and GitHub estimates it gives developers a 30% productivity boost, and based on those numbers, they've come up with the estimate on the economic boost. Speaking of the economy, this is an interesting Reddit post on the Singularity subreddit if you want to play an armchair economist. By the way, every economist is an armchair economist. These are some hypothetical timelines on how the economy might evolve with AI. Efficiency leading to less employees, leading to less consumers, and then downward economic spiral. Another theory is efficiency leading to huge productivity, more jobs, more consumption, and an upward economic spiral. Or high efficiency leading to reduction in high paying jobs and increase of very low paying jobs, collapse of Ivy League jobs, increase in number of unicorns having single digit employees, etc. Well, first of all, nobody knows what will happen. Economists, leaders, AI experts, they're all just fortune tellers right now, including myself. The best you can do is have an opinion on this. You wanna know mine? Good, I thought you would never ask. So here we go. Look, on a long enough time horizon, we will reach some form of singularity where non-humans can do literally everything. Assuming we don't lose control over that AI, it will come down to the most basic, most raw human factors, or power dynamics. What will the entities that hold the most power over the AI do? What will those entities be? I'm quite optimistic here, actually. I wouldn't be surprised if AI is controlled by a global organization that more or less has humanity's best interest at heart. Of course, to get there, we may go through some trouble, maybe even catastrophic wars or power struggles with massive corporations. But in the end, AI is just software running on hardware. Never forget that. What Google and Microsoft can do, another group of smart people with some resources can also do. I want you to never forget that. They build an AGI? Okay, after a while, some other people build another AGI, maybe a better one. It's not that simple, but it's kind of like that. Eventually, we will reach some form of equilibrium. Maybe people take control of AI and use it to create ultimate abundance in a post-capitalist utopia where universal basic income is guaranteed, but we still compete in a capitalism as a game because we will have to do something. The other option is, you know, corporations or governments manage to keep control over this omnipotent AGI and use it to control or exploit people. But even that can't really last. It comes down to humans. Just look at history. Our political and social and economic systems keep improving as time goes by. Have no doubt in your mind. We live in the best possible time in history. Sure, sometimes we take a step back, but eventually we figure it out as a species and that progress seems to be correlated with technological advancement a lot of the times. And when technology seems to do more harm than good, we find ways to regulate it eventually. Like, come on, do you really think humanity will just give up on itself? Sure, we go through a lot of rough patches, but we're still here, aren't we? We may hit our foot on the cupboard while we're drunk and we look for the light switch in the dark, but eventually we figure it out. I'm kind of proud to be a human, I guess. Rant over, mic drop, moving on. We have some pretty good AI news related to healthcare. So, AI can be used to spot the earliest signs of breast cancer. And a drug for chronic lung disease designed entirely by AI will start human trials on 60 people soon. AI developments are especially prominent in medicine. Look, no matter what you think of AI, 
nobody can deny that it will revolutionize medicine. That's just a clear win. Nothing but net, baby. Emotional artificial intelligence market will grow from 34 billion to 52 billion in the next six years. Emotional AI is the AI used to recognize emotions, be it in text, images, audio, or video. This is another field that will make more human-like robots a reality and make pretty much any AI easier to use for humans. So, 34 to 52 billion. I couldn't find how they measure this, but honestly, it seems kind of low. I think people are still underestimating the possibility for AI to grow exponentially. Okay, let's check out some tools. Unity launches Sentis and Muse AI, tools for real-time 3D creation. Uh, let's play the demo here a little bit. Okay, so it seems like game development will get like an AI power-up. Lots of interesting tools. They're gonna be able to control the characters with AI prompts. Create assets easily. Yep, cool. New bio-inspired robot can roll on four wheels, turn its wheels into rotors and fly, stand on two wheels like a meerkat to peer over obstacles, walk by using its wheels like feet, use two rotors to help it roll up steep slopes on two wheels, tumble, and I guess send your mom a Mother's Day card when you forget it. Sounds like this thing can do, well, everything. Multi-model mobility Morphobot, or M4, could have lots of different use cases from transporting injured people to exploring new planets. Uh, let's check out this demo a little bit. Oh, I thought, I thought it was gonna be bigger for some reason. Hmm. Okay. Make it fly. Make it fly. <laughs> Jeez, did I just use the phrase from that weird kid in Game of Thrones? <laughs> Come on. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay, pretty awesome. Let's cover the boring AI news a little bit. The talks about AI regulation and geopolitics. Not the news that you want, but the news that you need. You know, the broccoli of AI news. So, Google is having productive talks with the EU on AI regulation. Productive? Sounds like Google is bribing EU officials. No, seriously, a few days ago, Zuckerberg and Altman both approved AI regulation, and now Google is on board, it seems. So it sounds like things are going well, or at least going well for governments and big companies. We'll see how it plays out for, you know, us, the plebs. China lures billionaires into race to catch US and artificial intelligence. So, investors in China are very enthusiastic about building and investing in AI. Dude, like, look, I talk about China often on this channel. Obviously, they are doing some amazing stuff over there. We all know they work super hard, but I really have some, let's say, constructive feedback for their government and political system. Why is it always that China is trying to catch up, trying to copy, to imitate? There's a billion and a half people there, the biggest country in the world by far. Most of them are Asian, obviously, which means they probably have IQ levels through the roof. How come they in Williams never come up with stuff first? How come the biggest country in the world with possibly the most smart people in the world is always the runner-up in technology. I'm glad you asked that question because now I'm gonna answer it. It's the political system. It's not exactly a system that fosters entrepreneurship and innovation and taking smart risks and technology. I mean, it's probably pretty hard to be creative and think freely when you have cameras monitoring you on every street corner, waiting for you to spit on the street so that you can lose some imaginary points. This is all just theory, but I have a strong suspicion that if China somehow gets rid of the Communist Party and develops a more liberal political system, they will actually become the world leader in tech. Okay, more China news. So, Baidu, which is like China's Google, says that Ernie, their AI chatbot, is better than ChatGPT, notably in comprehensive abilities. Yeah, we mentioned this before in other episodes, I think. The thing is, the test was conducted by the state-controlled newspaper China Science Daily and the datasets were also created by some Xi Jinping crony, probably. I mean, who knows? Ernie may actually be better, but let's just say that China has a history of creating narratives that suit their government. And last China news for today, stocks of Chinese air companies go down about 4% because of the US's ban on importing NVIDIA and other AI chips into China. Well, I mean, 
this might slow China down short term, but they'll probably start their own AI chip company as well, right? They have some smart people, it might take them longer, but they'll figure it out eventually. Actually, I have a bad feeling about this whole AI arms race between countries. It creates a space for unhealthy competition, and that might easily escalate. Probably both China and the West are equally to blame here. They just can't find a way to play ball and cooperate and create AI in a safer and more stable way instead of doing this whole like mindless race to the bottom, which probably ends up with some crazy powerful AI in the hands of the wrong people. And finally, let's end with a quote from Mexican filmmaker and guy who looks like Russell Crowe after a month of binge drinking, Guillermo del Toro. I don't fear artificial intelligence, I fear human stupidity. I'm not a big fan of Del Toro's movies, but I am a big fan of this quote. AI for the time being can do tremendous good and can only do as much harm as stupid people make it do. And that's the way it is. That was the AI report. We got through another crazy AI marathon. I'm learning about AI a ton here every day and even more importantly, I feel like I'm catching the beat in a way. I'm starting to develop an intuition for the field, for where things are going and maybe even see how AI will develop and change our lives and hopefully take advantage of that somehow. That's my goal for my audience as well. I want you to be informed and learn. So come on, hit those like and subscribe buttons already, and I'll see you tomorrow.